this is Samuel from St. Heart and today I'm just making out the sunset. You know, I was trying to get here before the sun sets, but it's like I almost missed it. I like this place, it's called the Rare View and it's right across from the Delaware. But today what I wanted to talk about and our review is the Creed Royal Oud. Uh, the Creed Royal Oud. And this perfume oil is from the house. This perfume oil type was actually inspired from the house of Creed. And Creed, the perfume, Creed, um, the house of Creed, they have a very popular perfume called Creed Aventus. You know, I don't have it now, I don't have it in my collection of perfume oils, but it's something that I really look up to. And as soon as I get it, rest assured, um, I will make a review on it, you know, because I, I really look forward to that perfume um, oil. Uh, but what I have here, the Creed Royal Oud perfume oil type, is my first review of um, from the House of Creed, and it's also my first uh, review on um, any perfume oil uh, with oud, you know, and I'm very very excited about it. Um, oud itself uh, came, you know, oud comes from the Middle East, you know, it stands from the Middle East, and it comes from a wood called agar wood. Uh, matter of fact, it's, it comes from the agar tree, and when they cut it down um, into the agar wood, the malt on this wood kind of go ferment it and actually process it. And the fragrance that come out of this agar wood is the wood, um, um, expensive ingredients. And being my first time, my first experience with wood, you know, um, I could tell that it's very, it's very woody. It's very kind of dry a little bit. It's very dark, woody, and sort of musky. You know, so that's like the whole feel um, from oud. Now, when you think about oud, you know, there's no surprise that this is called the Creed Royal. Uh, Royal, meaning when you think about oud, think about think about gold. You know, think about uh, marble. Think about leather, and think about wood. You know, think also about patience, you know, patience in the Middle East. And um, that reminds me so much of um, the tales from the Arabian Nights. You know, it's a very famous story from, which was based in the Middle East. Um, if you watch Aladdin and um, the Genie, you know, it's a show that was showed on TV. Uh, you have an idea of what, um, I'm talking about, you know, and there's a lot, a lot of times the patients were known for their wealth, you know, because they had a lot of gold, they had a lot of um, ornaments and jewels, you know, but this Alibaba in the 40s was a very, one of my favorite um, stories, you know, because um, it was Alibaba, you know, who was a, uh, not a very, he was a poor carpenter, you know, and then one day he went into the wood to cut, he went into the wood to cut some wood, and um, whilst he was there, he saw 40 thieves, you know, so 40 thieves came in and then he hid somewhere and then he realized that there was this cave and these 40 thieves actually went into the cave and they, before they went into the cave, because it was like a big um, gate on the cave, you know, but they, they said open sesame, you know, and then when they said that, the whole, the, the whole door to the, the, the cave opened, you know, so he was very curious. And then it shut back down and they went in, did whatever they were gonna do and then they came out, you know. So when they left and he saw that everything was safe, he gingerly went to the cave and he shouted, open sesame, you know. And then when the cave opened, he, to his surprise and his amazement, there were so much gold. There was so much gold packed to the ceiling upon gold, upon gold, upon gold. There was millions of golds and jewelry in this cave, you know. So he um, didn't know what to do. He grabbed um, like a sack of gold, you know, and then he, um, he left and came home. Now, when he came home, he didn't want to make a big scene about it or tell everybody, of course, you know. <laughs> I would do the same thing too, you know. I'll probably, you know, don't worry, I'll probably might have called you, right, and told you. <laughs> but, I mean, what would you do? And if you find, like, this thing, you know, 
So he was like very discreet about it. And um, he and his wife, you know, so he, he had a sister-in-law and he was so poor, he didn't even have like a gauge, like a, a way, you know, so he would um, ask his sister-in-law to borrow the, 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 the way and bring it up to his place. And then he would weigh the, um, he would weigh the, um, the gold, you know, and then he would use it and, you know, eventually he, he got, his life began to improve, you know. Now, the interesting part of the story was that his sister-in-law, who was very greedy, <laughs> you know, began to also get very curious, you know, and then he would ask, he would, he would, he started to wonder, and then he said, he had an idea. So he said, um, the next time this guy comes to get the, the way, I'm going to have some glue under the, the way, and then to see how what he's weighing, because um, apparently he, he doesn't have any money, you know, it's like people that use the way, it's like they're weighing something, you know, something is cooking. So anyway, long story short, you know, when Alibaba came to borrow the way, he brought, he brought it back and then she saw that there was a gold coin stuck under the, um, under the, the way. So he said, oh, okay, so that's something going on, <laughs> you know, Alibaba, there's something going on with Alibaba. So I think she didn't say anything. And then she followed Alibaba into the, the woods, right? And then she saw that Alibaba would go into the cave. And then when he came back, he came out with a sack of, um, gold, of, of gold or whatever, you know, with the, the gold that he got from there. And what, and then she also learned that Alibaba would shout open sesame to get inside the, um, the cave, you know? So long story short, <laughs> you know, long story short, um, she went to tell her husband, you know, and the husband went to get, you know, also went there at some time to go get the gold. But what he forgot was that in order to come out of the, the cave, you have to say, close sesame, you know, and he didn't know that, you know, so he got stuck in, the thieves came back, they found him, and then they killed him, you know, so that's kind of like the story, you know, I mean, it goes a little bit further, but I will highly recommend that you go and watch or read about that story. It's a very, very interesting story. Um, so anyway, so this um, Creed Royal Oud, you know, it runs so much of the Middle East, you know. Matter of fact, um, somebody, somebody said, I read a comment the other day, said um, it reminded them of a powder from the Middle East, but I don't know what kind of powder it is. And that also um, kind of, um, I agreed with what I was smelling because when I first smelled it, I realized that it reminded me, it, it just smelled like powder and it smelled like baby powder, you know, so I said, oh, <laughs> this thing smells like baby powder, but don't get that wrong or don't take that in, um, in a way. I think, first of all, smell it and see what it smells like to you because I also have people that smelled it and they, think, they thought that it smelled more like cedar wood, you know, cedar wood is supposed to be also be woody and musky and uh, dry so i highly recommend that um <laughs> these beds right <laughs> so I, I highly recommend you smell it first before you make conclusions uh, or before you you know get turned off by the baby powder or if it's something that you love um then that's great too so i got this powdery feel you know all over um with it um now it's very dated. I'll say it's very old and established, but it's not outdated. And you, have, you get that kind of feel from it. It's very classy. Um, think of it like a, a Rolls Royce, you know, very classy, very, very expensive. And it embodies like richness and wealth. There is a particular kind of oud that they used in this um, perfume oil. And it's called Regal Indian Oud. So apparently it's not the traditional oud that you get straight from India. The traditional um, oud that you get straight from India. Um, apparently this oud is um, it's more craft, it's more modern, you know, it's, it's more uh, crafted for the Western audience, you know, people in the West, um, you know, who might be too offended by the traditional oud from India or uh, from the Middle East, you know. So, um, that is he now well. Now the other thing I also smell was that it has this um, limey um, smell in the in the background, you know. So there is a big explosion, and 
the, the main um, style of the show is the powdery, woody smell that I have. But in the background, there is this lime that you also get. Now, the wood is very faint in this perfume oil, you know. And so, if, if you are looking for a lot of wood, a lot of wood, if you're looking for a lot of wood, you might not get that. You know, it's very, very faint. Now, most people have said they got a lot of cedar wood. You know, a lot of cedar wood in, instead of the wood. You know, so you might get that. Now, it's very strong at first. You know, so I, I highly recommend that um, you start slow. Because what I did was that I put like three strokes on my chest. And I put um, a dab on my hand and a dab on my hand. And um, what I noticed was that after an hour to two hours, it was very strong. It was so strong, it gave me a headache, you know. So, to start off, I will just say put put, um, put, a, put a little bit on first and then see how uh, it projects on your skin. And then that way you could decide on how much you're gonna put on yourself. Um, it projects very well, it projects very strongly, two to three feet away from you. Uh, 10 out of 10 for projection. Now, it also lasts very long on your skin. Good five to six hours on your skin, uh, you could get that longevity on your skin um, as well. For the notes, the top notes are bergamot, lime, and um, pink berries. So the middle angelic roots. So the middle notes are angelic roots. So basically, you have sandalwood and Indian raga wood. So those are the um, the notes break down, you know, but like I said before, you get a lot of powdery, dry, woody, musky notes, and then at some points you get a little bit of the lime and the freshness. And I could see why they um, did that because it's very good, um, a good blend. Because, um, like I said before, it's, it's something that will be accepted by um, a Western audience. And now, with uniqueness, I'll say it's very, very unique, you know, because of how it's um you know there's nothing like this you know there's nothing that smells very <laughs> middle eastern or very powdery um with some lime in the background you know and it's very outdated very classy and uh, very very natural you know so it's definitely very unique in my opinion um as well now for versatility i know this is marketed towards men but I could also easily say that it's um, women could also use it um, as well. Um, I don't know if a younger audience will appreciate it um, because of its classiness and its um, though it's very sophisticated and established, yet not outdated. You know, so I don't know if a younger audience will appreciate it. But for a more mature audience, I know you're definitely going to appreciate it. Um, I know women will love it too because it's somewhat smells like baby powder to me, and I know women love women love babies. <laughs> so if you're a guy and put it on, it might be something that will be attractive to women. Um, but also because of the, um, you know, I know in the past I know guys that will put on baby powder when they go and talk to women, and for some reason women are supposed to like baby powder for some reason. I haven't tried it, I don't know if it'll work. There's a psychology behind it. I think it might it might work, you know, but you know, I think women will love it. Women will appreciate it. I think women can use this and women could appreciate this on a guy. As well as women could also use it. Now when it comes to um getting this, I know at Scent Hack you could get this Creed Royal perfume oil type for five dollars and ninety-nine cents and I'll personally ship them to you. Um, when I checked with the Creed perfume, the house of, of Creed, their perfumes are very, very expensive, you know. This particular one, um, the four ounce of this Creed Royal perfume um, cost anywhere from 300 to 400 US dollars. You know, it's very, very expensive, very, very pricey. You know, it's like a whole entire savings just to get a bottle. You know, so I'm so glad, I am so appreciated that I have this in my collection. And I don't have to spend like a whole bunch of, of of money just to get a get the experience you know and I, I know um you definitely appreciate it you definitely um like and, and love it you know um to say um so to some you know i know they said um it has been voted that this is good for the fall 
and also for the night, you know, because of the the wood or the cedar kind of feel that you get from it. Um, however, I like this perfume oil because the of the lime in the background. So the lime kind of um, kind of balances it out. Cause the reason they said the four and the nine because of the wood notes and the musky notes um, supposed to be dry and and good for those weather but because it's messed up with the line now it's like more very dynamic you know so i i, I could see i know it would be great for fall and for the night but then i know it can do well in the summertime and in other seasons as well so it's very very versatile and that's one thing that i know i'm gonna love about it um, I have seen myself using it in the night um, or in the day, whatever time, but mostly in the night <laughs> when I'm just showered and I'm just sitting at home and just relaxing because of the powdery feel that I personally get from it. You know, so I don't know what you get from it, but I highly recommend it. Follow me on social media, you know, just to get updates on what I'm doing uh, with reviews and stuff like that. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. But most importantly, um, make sure you subscribe below. The subscription button is right here. And that's the only way you will get uh, my new videos when they do come out, my new reviews and stuff like that. Um, to get this perfume again, when you scroll down this bottom, when you scroll down this video below, you'll get a link to um, Scent Hack, which is my website. And you could get it for $5.99, $5.99 US dollars and I will personally ship them to you. Uh, thank you again for watching. Take care and until next time.